Hello, Don Alex. Hello. Hi, guys. Good evening. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Welcome, Good evening. guys. How was the weekend? Very good. Very what did you good. do? I working. I worked. Yes, I worked. What about you, Arnold? Uh, I work. Uh, so you guys work Saturday and Sunday, both? Hi, Katya. Welcome. Hi. How are you this evening? Thanks. How was the weekend? Fine. What do you do? Did you because do my mom's birthday. Oh, it yes. was your mom's birthday? Yes, yesterday. Oh, say happy birthday to her. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Uh, and Mr. Juan Carlos Cervellón, I cannot hear you. Let me hear you. Are you there? Hello, hello, Hi. good evening. <laughs> Mr. Juan Carlos, yeah. where do you live? I, I live in Zacatecoluca. Ah, yeah, you told me that. All right. I said it was kind of far away. Okay. Yeah. Uh, welcome to another class, guys. It's nice having you here. And um, I would like us to start. It, last Thursday it was that we, we started watching this video. I would like us to work on some other examples, all right? So this specific part, look at this. I'm gonna take a picture of this, okay? Uh, we're gonna work on some examples. Hold on. So for example, we're gonna talk about El Salvador, all right? So if we have to say there are too many, what can we say? Here. This is plural, right? There are too many. Let's write an example about El Salvador. So what is something that we have too many? There are too many what, guys? In El Salvador. Cars. Yes, uh, that is right. Cars. There are too many dogs. Too many. <laughs> too many, you know what? Too many street dogs, right? Street dogs, correct. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Okay, one more thing. Everybody participate. Come on. Now, we're going to say there should be fewer. All right, let's write it here. So there should be fewer. And remember that fewer, okay, hold on. Fewer, we're going to use for countables, right? So there should be fewer what in El Salvador? Mm. Fewer people, <laughs> you think? No. No. <laughs> there uh, should be fewer. Uh, Ferrari cars. Sorry? Ferrari car. We don't have any. You know what? There should be fewer politicians, right? Politician. <laughs> hey, yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are too many. Too many, all right? So there should be fewer. Yeah. Okay, we need more. We need more what? We need we more... Need more. More money. <laughs> yeah, we need more money. <laughs> money. Okay, yeah. is that clear? So True. using this, using this, I want you to write one example about El Salvador in pairs. Is that clear? I sent it to WhatsApp. Yeah. Okay. Bless you. Thank you. So, all right, check WhatsApp, Thank please. You. And let's write one example per uh, structure. Ready? Okay, 
hold on here. Okay, accept the invitation, please. Here we go. Everybody accept the invitation. Mr. Juan Carlos, did you get the invitation? Mr. Noe, hi. Hello, good evening. Good evening. I'm going to send you to a group. We're already practicing, okay? Okay. Accept the invitation, please. Okay, right now. Let's continue. Estamos iniciando. Okay. 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 Examples okay. about the Salvador. There are, there are too many buildings. Place. In this class. They are uh, um, they are more people to to in country. Um there should be um fewer poor people. Yeah, in the morning. That way in the morning. No, if you were poor people, she's saying. Uh sorry. No, it's okay. Do you have questions? No. All right, continue. Let me know if you finish, okay? All right, I have a Yolanda, Jose Armando, Arnold Cuellar, all right? Mm, let me see. I want you to practice. I sent an image to WhatsApp. Did you get it? This is from last class. <clears throat> all right so what we're doing is we're writing examples about el salvador the first one says okay take a look everybody should be looking at this you got it yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I want you to read examples about el salvador for example there are too many uh too many street dogs in el salvador right <laughs> There are too many cars in El Salvador. Another example, there should be fewer, uh, there should be fewer politicians, I said. <laughs> okay, we need more uh, jobs, for example. So pay attention and make sure you're using countables or non-countables, all right? Just one example for each one, okay? Start, the three of you are gonna work together. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. Okay. Hi, Yolanda. Hi. How are you? Good. What about you? I'm good too. But nice. Now I'm in darkness. 
Sorry, what did you say? I am outside. Uh, ajá, menos. Menos, pero se usa en... En, en, con, en con, no. En less con también con. significa menos, pero se usa con non con. Ah, non con. No. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, for example, less pollution, less ice. <laughs> ice. And we need more work. Workplace. We need more more jobs, you can say more work is okay. More workplaces is also okay because more you can use it for both countable and uncountables, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you almost done? Mm, mm, maybe. <laughs> almost. All right. Let me check on the other guys. Politicos. Politician. 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 I think it it should be okay. In my country, there are too many too many bad bathes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, give me an example. You um, me? Yeah. Ah, in my many. country. Yeah, my country. There are too many motorcycles. Yeah, that's right. I that's agree true. with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <Yeah. laughs> I agree with you. Um, I think uh, there should be fewer. You were um, no. There should be less delinquent. Less violence, you mean? I don't know. Yeah, less violence. Less crime, right? Jose Armando, yeah. so you were able to take the class. I just saw your message right now that you say you were gonna have problems, but you're ah here. yes. <laughs> How do I you have do it? problem with my my signal. That's why. And oh. now I am outside. I am <laughs> trying to get a sign. Oh. That's why. <laughs> well, it's also awesome. it's dark. Yes. Hmm? Well, but you're making the effort. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay, everybody will be back right now because we're in the main session. So they're coming back from the, okay. the meeting, the breakout room. Right. So give me uh, some seconds. Okay. okay. Here they are. Okay. Welcome back. So now I'm going to need one example for each one. So be ready with your notebook or whatever you took, took notes with. So example with there are too many. Come on, quickly. On here. Too many. Uh, there are too many old buses. <laughs> yes, that's right. Awesome. Okay, an example <laughs> with fewer. Uh, uh, there should be fewer cars, of course. <laughs> it's a should be fewer really cars. Problem. It's a it's a real problem or a big problem. Okay, uh, Jose Armando, Yolanda, somebody, please say uh, an example with enough. We don't have enough. A good, good hospital. Oh yes, that's true. That's sad. Okay, Miss Mirna, yeah. it's always too much. Mirna, you're muted. 
Not anymore. Okay. Uh, we were working only with uh, many, fewer, and more. Um, try to improvise one with too much. It's okay. Um, with a non-countable one, though. Um, right, too much. There is too much. Okay, there is too much. Um, <laughs> there is too much. Um, Somebody wants to help. Crime. Okay, that's much. awesome. Too much crime. Too much violence. Yeah. Right, you cannot much. count it, so you say too, there is, yeah. not there are, there is too much violence. Okay, yeah. uh, Miguel Angel. There is yeah. too Hello. much smoke. Yes, there is too much smoke. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Miguel Angel, example with less. Less. Mm, um, there should be simple less. Simple of less. Mm. <laughs> there shall be left. Um, <coughs> left. Um, okay, think about it. Hey, hola, hola, hola. Ah, yeah, sí, I sí, hear you. <laughs> what you were thinking? Okay, example with less. We left, need guys. more left. <laughs> No, we need uh -huh. less. There should be less. Um, more hours in the day for finish we we work. To finish our work. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Do you have questions about this topic, guys? Uh, we have a question, teacher. Tell me. Uh, green song it Con or non con no? Green areas? Yes, you can say areas. So it is countable. Not green, but areas. So it is countable. Green areas. Mm -hmm. Green areas. Countable. 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 Oh, okay. So right. it's okay to say. Uh, to change uh, them to plural. They they should, should, uh, we need more. Green areas, exactly. Okay. Um, any other questions? Nope. Okay. Um, no question. You finish this part. Did you uh, tell me your name if you finish this part? Who finished 2.2? Nobody? Satya? No? Yolanda? Yes. Yeah. I, I finished. finished. Yes, I did. Arnold, you finished? I finished. Yes, teacher. I did. Yes, the Karen. Majority, the majority has finished already, so just give me the answer yes. in that case, yeah. okay? Um, let me see. Karen Asensio, number one. Read, please, and give me the answer. Okay, which of the following option is not a count now? Uh, Parking. Parking. Very good. Okay, number two, Arnold Cuellar. Hi, teacher. Hi. <laughs> okay. What are some examples of no common nouns? Uh, water and air. Water and air. Air. Uh, yes, okay. And wood. And wood. And wood. Right, because you have like pieces of wood. Okay, number three, uh, Yolanda. Okay, what are some examples of noun of counts nouns? A desk, camera, book, okay. and just that. That's it. Very good. Miguel Angel. Hello. Number four. Yeah. 
I don't see the question. Really? Number four. Ah, yeah. the five. Five. Why is there too much traffic? Uh-huh. No, that, that's number five. We're looking at number four. I don't know the settings of your phone, probably. I'm well, number then. four. Right. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I, I, okay, I see. Why do the bus cause too much pollution? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the bus cause too much pollution because they are old and... Yes. It's the number one. The buses cause too much. It's number one. Are good. Bus, said, they are all. Yes, Mr. Juan Carlos, number five. Uh, why <coughs> is there? Why is there too much traffic? Very good. Uh, because. Because there are too many cars. Number two. Two. All right. Let's check. Hopefully everything is good. Yes. All right. Great job. Everybody did it perfectly. All right. Let's see. Um, I need somebody to read the objective. Hold on. Mm -mm -mm. Juan Carlos Cervellón. You're falling asleep, Mr. Juan Carlos. <laughs> He's yawning. Uh, mm, two the three election objective. Yeah, this is actually two plus three. <coughs> continue. Guys, hold on. Continue the English one second, Mr. Mr. Juan Carlos. Hold on. Guys, let's mute the microphone. All right. So uh, we have three different names for this, right? So if I have, for example, three can you see my screen is it okay yes all right hold on so we have different things so we have three point thirteen. we have like um yahoo it's this is all guys so i'm gonna say gmail com or and then this is what is the different name how do you call this this is a point right how do you call it here yeah Point. What about here? That. Yeah. That. That. Very good. In here. Period. It's period. Period. Okay. So those are the different period. names. So point, that, period, whenever it is text. This is for websites and the internet and for numbers. Okay? Okay. Very good. So, read the objective, Mr. Juan Carlos. Thank you. Uh, it's 2.3 lecture objective. Uh, continue building English conversational skills by learning English expression of quantity by the end of the, this class you will be to able to discuss transportation service using our bird of quality quantity mm -hmm. including enough many fewer and more fewer Practice and more uh, fewer and more Practice incorporating expression of quantity in, in phrase such so as there aren't enough buses, buses or we need more public buses or we need more public transportation. I don't see. Right. No, that's it. You're finished. Thank you. Okay. That was good. All right, everybody mute the microphone and we are going to watch this video, all right? Hi everyone. By the end of this class you'll be able to express problems that Hi everyone. By the end of this class you'll be able to express problems that exist in a city. For example, there are too many cars in my city. 
there's too much pollution in my city. We need more public transportation. We need more police officers. Let me present the structure now. In order for us to make sense of there are too many cars, we need to understand the following rule. Uh, and that is that we're going to have there. And by the way, this can be the subject of the sentence. It doesn't necessarily need to be there. Like, for example, we can say we have too many cars. And let me go ahead, as I am talking about that, I'm going to go ahead and write the examples now. So let me write the example that is there. There are, whenever you see the expression too many, that means that there is a problem, that we have too much of too many. In this case, there are too many cars. Okay. Um, and just so that we keep the pattern there, I'm going to go ahead and change the colors um, there. And that follows the verb to be. And then we have too many. And that's how we make that expression. There are too many cars. We can also say we have too many cars. What I would like to do next is to make sense of that last statement that you see there. There aren't enough buses. And this is whenever we are missing something, right? We need more of something like, for example, we need more buses. Maybe we need more police officers. We're going to use the expression, there aren't enough. And then that's going to follow a count now. So we used there plus aren't, and then this is going to follow the expression enough. And what else can we say? Well, we can say there aren't enough police officers. What's another problem in your city? Well, maybe there aren't enough parks. What I would like to do now is to talk about how to give opinions about what is needed in a city. And so I want to make sense of the example, there should be fewer cards. That's an opinion about what I think we need in my city. So in order for us to form that idea, we need a subject. Then we need should. After that, we're going to need the verb to be. And this is followed by either fewer or more. And then it's going to be followed by a count now. So let me give you an example of that right now. For example, we could say there should be fewer cars, which is the example that we have here. We have a subject. This could be in the form of there, as it can be in the form of another pronoun or another kind of subject. Uh, then it's going to follow the model verb should. And then this is, will be followed by a verb. It can be the verb to be, but it can be other verbs as well. And then the um, adverb quantities, such as fewer or more, and then whatever count now that exists. There should be fewer cars. We should have more police officers. And these are opinions that we want to express about what is needed in a city. And the other example that I haven't talked about, we need more subway lanes. That is kind of like a stronger opinion, so it's no longer a suggestion, if you will. Um, but it's, it's something similar. And so um, it's quite similar. We're going to say we. The only difference is that we don't include a model verb, right? We need more, and in this case, subway lines. What I would like to do next is nice. Sorry, explain how to describe problems that take place in a city, but now I'm going to do it with non-count nouns. And so what I would like for you to notice is the difference, right? We, we discuss how to express problems with count nouns. For example, we said there are too many cars. And what I want you to notice is that with non-count nouns, we're going to use different words. So for example, instead of too many, we will use too much. Instead of fewer, we will use less. Um, we can use more for count nouns 
as well as for non-count nouns. So as you can see the example there, we need more subway lanes, that's a countable. We need more public transportation, that's a non-countable. Um, and enough is the same way. There aren't enough buses, there isn't enough parking. Um, the only thing that will change in this last example is that we're always going to treat no countable nouns as singular, even though we might be talking about uh, more things. So let me try to present some structure there so that we can try to make sense of the examples here. So for example, we can say there is too much traffic and what I would like to do is make sure that I'm using the appropriate colors that I chose and there's our example we have a subject that is followed by the verb and then this is followed by either too much or enough and then we have a non count now so the example there is too much traffic let me give another quick example there is too much, and I'm going to say pollution. Um, and what I would like to do is give an example there. Um, there isn't enough parking. And the last thing related to this topic is how to express opinions that you have about what should be included in a city. And the only difference now is that we're going to include some sort of model verb, okay? So we have our subject is there, then we include should, be, uh, and in this case we're going to use less, and we're going to say pollution. Um, I'm going to change these words now, and instead of too much or not enough or, or enough, I will use there should be less or more. Okay, because what we want to do now is we want to express an opinion. So we're going to have a subject. Uh, the subject is there. It's going to be followed by the model verb should. And then this is going to be followed by some kind of verb. It doesn't have to be the verb to be. It can be something else. And then either less or more and whatever none count that exists. The last thing that I would like for you to do is to practice the concepts that we learned. I want you to practice giving expressions about what problems are in your city. And I want you to use a combination of both count nouns and non-count nouns. And remember that if you are going to... Okay, um, this is what we just did basically. Do you have any questions about the structure or how this works or is it clear now? Not. No, it's clear. It's clear. Yeah, based on the examples you gave me, it was clear. So we can move on. All right. We're going to go to um, this section 2.5 and do the exercise. Who finished this part already? Mr. I have. Who else is Sia, did you finish? Ms. Ortiz? There are two. Yolanda, you finished? Yeah. What about you? Uh, Katia Lima, you finished? No. Not yet? No. No? Mirna, have you finished? Jose Armando? No. Karen? Yes, teacher. Okay, the number one, right? Yeah, no, I'm saying the majority of you. Let me see how many examples we have. Okay, we can do it all together. Let's do that. Okay. So if you haven't finished, guys, you should go to section 2.5 on the platform and work on this right now. But let's do it, okay? So number one, yes. Go ahead. Got it. Okay. Which is which is correct? There aren't. Um, there. Let me check, teacher. There aren't too many police officers in my city. Okay, let me see. Does everybody I think agree? Is that, I yes, think I there agree. Aren't enough. I, 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 enough. I think it's the number two. Yes, the thing is that since it is negative, right, it's negative, 
uh, you wouldn't say there aren't too many, right? There aren't enough. Okay. Aren't. Yes. All right. Number two means there, Juan Carlos. There, there is too much traffic, so the government government need to build more highways. Yes. Does everybody agree with that? Number one. Yes. 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 Very good. More highways. Yes. I have another Juan Carlos, not Mr. Cervellon. There is one more. I don't know his last name. So Juan Carlos, not Cervellon, the other one. Number three. Mr. J.D. Yes. I think it's the third one. Which is correct. Yeah. Which is correct. Mm -hmm. And there are two. There is too much. There are too much pollution in my city. Yes, the thing is that. Hold on. Number one. No. There is too much. Right. There, there is. There is. There, there is, is too much. much. There is. Okay. Yes, there is too much. The thing is that for uncountables what you're for things that you cannot count you have to use a is all right not is. r because r is for plural very good number four miguel angel um complete the statement i can't i can't sleep at night uh night there should be uh, less noise. Oh, I can sleep at night. There should be more noise. Hold on one second. What did you say, Mr. Miguel Angel? Uh, too much noise. There should be, but yes, it says there should be. You think it is okay? Uh, there, like there should be more noise, or like there should be too much. I think it's the opposite. Less noise. Right. Yes, it's the opposite. Uh, so there should be less noise. Okay, and less, less noise. noise. Okay. Yes. Exactly. Mirna Ortiz, would you do number five, please? Okay, and complete the following statements using quantity expressions. Too many, fewer, more. Make sure not to use capital letters or periods. The government needs to build, I think, it's more highways. <coughs> more highways. Let me see. Let's see yes. how it did. Everything is right. Okay, awesome. So we have worked up to section 2.5 so far. We're doing great progress. All right. So far, do you have any questions? No? Okay. No. <laughs> I see no. Mr. Guillermo Gonzalez. Hi, Hi, Mr. Gonzalez. Can you hear me? Hi, yes, yeah, sorry I'd be late. <laughs> sorry to be late. Okay, sorry to be late. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it, it's all right. You sent a message, right? And you said that you were gonna be late, it's okay. Is this your first class? No, right? Uh, no. <laughs> mm -mm. I think I said, where are you, Mr. Guillermo? I don't know, all right. Because of the <laughs> picture, I'm saying. I don't recognize that picture at Confia. <laughs> That's why. Anyway, welcome. So, Guillermo, can you read the objective, please? Thanks. Let me see. Um, learn how to ask an answer in direct question in English. In this lesson, practice using indirect question by discussing a city or new destination. 
by the end of this class, you will be able to perform all it in their question, such, right. uh, such as, could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the near, nearest ATM is? ATM. ATM. ATM is, thanks. Can you tell me how often the bus run? The bus And run. do you know where the bus run? The bus run. Uh, and the bus do run. you know where I? Bus run. Bus is run. Ah, yes, yes. Sorry. Is <laughs> okay. And do you know where I can catch the bus? This mm -hmm. lesson, this lesson, lesson, mm, lesson will will help you seek information to see um, grammatical correct English. Right. Okay. So let's see. It, instead of watching the video yet, I'm going to give you a short explanation. All right. First of all, why do we need indirect questions, guys? Like, for example, we're going to practice this tomorrow, but pay attention tonight so we don't, uh, we are able to practice it correctly. Okay. So, do you know? Could you tell me? Could you tell me? And what else did it say? Could you tell me? Can you tell me? Oh, we have can you tell me? All right. Can you tell me? All right. First of all, my question is, why do we use this structure? Why do we use indirect questions, guys? To be more polite. Exactly. That is the answer I was looking for. So we're going to use indirect questions to be more polite. Okay. Imagine, right, you're walking on on a street in New York, for example, and you're like, eh, ¿Dónde está el bus? Right? You think that's correct? No, right? You would sound very impolite. That's why we're gonna need this structure. The thing is that this structure is a little bit confusing because it's not a usual question. So what I recommend you to follow is this structure. Take notes if you can, please, because we're going to practice tomorrow. And this structure is not common, okay? So you're going to use the expression, okay? This is the expression, do you know? Could you tell me? And can you tell me? All right, so expression. And then use the affirmative form, all right? Not a question form. So don't get confused, please. This is very important. Don't get confused because you're going to be using this a lot if you want to be polite, meaning you should use this kind of question the majority of the time with strangers, right? With your boss, okay? With your colleagues. So do you know? Okay, tell me. Is this correct? Pay attention, everyone, and tell me if it is correct, okay? So do you know um, where... Did she live? Is this correct? No. What is the correct form? Do you know where she lived? Where she lived? Where, where she lived? Like this? Where she lived? Yes. Live. Okay. Live. Okay. And do I need a question mark? In yes. This case, I yes. Need a question mark. Okay. Because of this expression, I need a question mark. Okay. So yes. why? Look, the expression is, um, do you know, right? And yes. I'm saying it's the affirmative form, like a statement, because it can be in the present simple form, past, future, present perfect. So I cannot give you the structure because it's gonna vary depending on the on the on the tense. So do you know? And then hold on. Sorry. Change the structure, please. Never mind. Sorry. We're going to use WH or if. Okay. Depending on, this is for WH questions and this is for yes, no questions. All right. So do you know where she lived? So this, if you notice, this is a statement. She lived like affirmative or negative. Okay. All right, and do you have any questions about this? Mm.
Is it confusing, you think? Are you sure? I got it. You got it? Yeah. Yes. All right. What is the affirmative form, guys? For example, I went, okay? She has traveled. This is affirmative. So th that's what I want in this part of it. Okay, let's watch the video. Let me see if we have time. Hold on. How long it is. Hi, everyone. But the oh, it's nine minutes long. Yeah, we're going to watch this video. So everybody with the microphone, please. And tomorrow we will practice. So take notes if necessary. In this class, you'll be able to ask and answer indirect questions about a city or a new place that you might visit. For example, you'll be able to make the following questions. Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the nearest ATM is? Do you know where the restrooms are? Can you tell me how often the buses run? Do you know where I can catch the bus? Before I begin to explain the grammar involved, what I would like to do is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. And so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to listen to a conversation and we're going to listen to different questions that are asked about a city. Your task is to listen carefully and I will ask you questions at the end of the audio program. Excuse me, could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There's one upstairs, across from the duty-free shop. Great. And do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Sure. Just follow the signs for transportation. Okay. And can you tell me how often they run? They run every 20 minutes or... Excuse me. It's me again. I'm sorry. I need some more information, if you don't mind. Do you know how much the bus costs? It's $20. You can buy a ticket on the bus. $20? Wow. Well, a taxi costs about $50. Mm. Okay. And do you know where a bookstore is? I'd like to get a guidebook. Go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. You too. Let me present some structure at this time. What we want to do in this class is we want to learn how to change direct questions into indirect questions. And the reason that we want to do this is because it's a lot more polite to use indirect questions. So for example, if I say, where's the bank? It's less polite than if I say, could you tell me where the bank is? And what we're going to learn is we're going to learn some rules that we're going to follow in changing these questions from direct to indirect questions. We're going to learn how to do it with the verb to be. And we're also going to learn how to change WH questions with either do or did. Now let's try to make sense of this whole concept here. What we want to do is we want to be able to turn direct questions into indirect questions. And let me propose a formula on how to do this, if you will. So we want to turn the question, where is the bank, into an indirect question. And the way that we'll do that is we will use some kind of polite model verb. So in this case, could you tell me? All right. And then this is going to be followed by a WH word. In this case, it happens to be where, but it could be any other WH word. For example, it could be what time, how often, when, etc. Any kind of WH word is what we're going to include here. So could you tell me, and in this case, I will ask where. This is going to be followed by the subject. So in this case, it happens to be the bank, where the bank, and then finally, we're, we're going to include the verb. So in this case, could you tell me where the bank is? And just so that we follow the pattern that I'm proposing here, I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors for now. Now, let's try to make sense of that second question that you see there towards the bottom. Where are the restrooms? 
that's the direct question what we want to do is we want to turn that question into an indirect question and you can do that in different ways for example you can do that by asking do you know okay or using another model verse. so in this case I'm going to propose and using this um, polite way of doing it okay so I'm basically just going to copy that so you can see that it's the, basically the same pattern that we're following we have could you tell me and that follows a WH word so in this case where okay so the subject is what's going to change now and instead of saying the bank we're not going to say the restrooms and then it's going to follow the verse so in this case it happens to be that since restrooms are plural then we're going to use the verb to be are instead of the verb to be is and um, well um, the phrase here could change as I mentioned just like we have it there on the book do you know where the restrooms are and basically we're gonna follow the same pattern for the questions that you see towards the bottom the only difference here is that we're no longer using the verb to be we're using other verbs and we could be talking about the present we could be talking about the past and that's what it means by either do or did so let's try to make sense of those as well so in this case it's a similar pattern if you will how often do the buses leave okay what we want to do is we want to be able to change this question into an indirect question and again we can use the same pattern that you see here so for I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this previous one that you see there so that you can see that uh, nothing changes or just a few things will change so in this case could you tell me I mean that's similar thing could you tell me and we're gonna use uh, the uh, WH question so in this case is gonna be how often all right and then that is followed by the subject so in this case the subject is the buses and then that is followed by the verb and so in this case it's no longer the verb to be but now it's the verb leave how often do the buses leave could you tell me how often the buses leave let's try to make sense of the other questions that you see there towards the bottom so in this case what we want to do is we want to use a polite way of asking so you can ask in the form of could you tell me do you know can you tell me um, and then it just repeats itself with do you know so in this case we're gonna use do you know that's the second question there do you know what time the bank opens so let me go ahead and write that example now do you know that follows the WH word so in this case is what time then that follows the subject and one thing that I want you to notice here is that in our indirect question we remove the auxiliary verb so we don't include does or do it no longer exists in our indirect question do you know what time the bank opens and the other thing that happens here is that the verb in this case will need to have an S and that's because since we don't have an auxiliary verb and the subject of the verb is singular and we're talking in the present therefore we need an S as you can see there and uh, well let's do the last one there uh, what um, when did flight 566 arrive so in that case um, the question could be do you know and the WH word is when and uh, the subject is flight 566 and in this case we have to change the verb to the past because we're not we're not using an auxiliary uh, like we're using the auxiliary when did flight 566 arrive in this case this verb is in the present but that's because we're using the auxiliary did so in this case since we removed that auxiliary verb that I mentioned we need to change that verb to the past form the last thing that I would like for you to do now is to practice the concepts that we
Okay. Um, I guess that with this additional explanation, it's clear, right? Yes, Jolanda says yes. I didn't hear you, but I saw you. Yes. All right. <laughs> so, um, tomorrow, please join everybody. Join tomorrow because we're going to practice speaking using this topic tomorrow in groups, okay? And okay. Um, some more exercises. Any questions? No. 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 Teacher. no. All right. Great. Well, thank you for joining me tonight, and I hope to see everyone tomorrow. Okay, have a beautiful night. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Okay, good, good night, night everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. <laughs>